Well, hello, 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 hello again. Welcome to another Feel the Fire Live broadcast. We thank the Lord for the Holy Spirit. We thank God for everything that he's doing. And we believe that the best is yet to come. Boy, we're experiencing God on a new level and a new way. And my prayer is that you are experiencing God. You see, because God is to be experienced. And that when we can experience him in our personal lives on a daily basis, in our corporate setting, then we could know that we're in right standing. We're right where God wants us to be. So we're excited about what he's doing. And we give God praise for another opportunity to share the living word of God with you tonight or this morning or whenever you're watching this because people watch our videos all different times of the night, three, three four o'clock in the morning or whenever you're watching it, we are glad to have you with us. We believe that this is another one of those divine appointments that God has ordained for this time. And there's some things he wants you to hear. It's things he wants us to know. Why? Because he's doing a new thing, folks. He's doing a new thing in the midst of his people. And he wants us to be informed. He wants us to understand what he's doing so that we can cooperate with him and be used by him in these last days. Folks, as I do believe that we're approaching the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's soon to come. But before he comes, he's going to get a church ready. He's going to get a church in place. He's going to raise up a church, his church, which will be the army of the Lord, this last day generation of remnant people who will carry his power, his glory, demonstrate his signs, wonders, complete the ministry of Jesus, conceal or uh, complete the book of Acts. Hallelujah. Like I said, the book of Acts is still being written and, and he will come back and catch us up to meet him in the air. Then he will come back and finish the process of cleaning up planet Earth himself, as he says, as the Bible tells us in Revelation 19. So things are unfolding. Things are happening. The reason there's so much increase and so much rapid intensifying of evil, intensifying of the moving of the power of the Holy Spirit, intensifying of all this destruction. The reason things are intensifying, folks, because things are coming to a close. Things are coming to an end. This church age, as we know it now, will no longer be as it has been for the last, I don't know how many thousand years, but it's all wrapping up and we want to be positioned properly. You've got to be positioned where you can hear what you need to hear, not what you want to hear, not a comfort zone. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you see, God has pulled us out of the comfort zone because the comfort zone will not equip us and prepare us to be ready for the Lord. So we thank the Lord that you are one of the called outs from the called out. Amen. Because he's calling this church out of the many churches. So we're excited about it tonight. So we're going to pray and we're going to stay in our sub stay with our subject, talking about the supernatural, talking about the supernatural operations of God through the Holy Spirit. Why? Because this is a time of the supernatural folks. And, um, and, and as, the, as the church, as believers, as disciples, we need to become more familiar with the supernatural workings of the Holy Spirit. So he's teaching us, he's showing us by revelation, by knowledge, and by the word of God, his supernatural plan, his, his supernatural process, and how we can operate in the supernatural. Don't you want to operate in the supernatural? Hey, amen. Hallelujah. You see, because this world is fascinated with the supernatural. I mean, Hollywood, the movies, all this stuff we're seeing in the movies, it's, it's, it's connected and pointing to the supernatural realm. And most of it, the sad part about it, most of what we've seen in movies are pointing to the supernatural realm of the dark side or the evil side of the supernatural realm. You see some of these commercials, some of these dragons and some of these creatures that they're creating, man, that stuff is from another world. Glory to God. That had to come from somebody whose mind is duped in evil. Amen. But what am I saying? I'm saying the world is consumed and they're anxious for the supernatural. People want things that are supernatural. We're talking about superheroes, Spider-Man, Superman, Superwoman, all this kind of stuff that, that, that people are just going after. Why? Because people are fascinated with supernatural things. Why? Because God has made us to be supernatural creatures. Amen. And what God wants us to do and understand and know is his supernatural plan, his supernatural operations. And that comes through the Holy Spirit. That comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ and being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, we're going to dive right into it tonight, but first we're going to pray. We're going to ask the Holy Spirit to lead us, guide us, and direct us, and we believe the will of the Lord will be done. So you can get your pad, get your pencil, get your notebook, highlighter, whatever you need. To take some notes, write some things down, because this is going to be very informative as God's going to teach us by the Holy Spirit. Not me, but the Holy Ghost going to teach me, and he's going to teach us all. Amen? So let's pray for us. Father, we thank you now for each one that have tuned in tonight. 
And God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit who's given us the revelation of the supernatural and has continued to pour out revelation, information, knowledge concerning your supernatural plan and your supernatural operation. Now, Father, I pray that tonight will be a night of power. This word will go forth with power. It will be the hammer against, against ignorance. It will be the hammer against religion, against deception, against the lies of the devil. And God, that your people, we all will know the truth and the truth will make us free. Father, we thank you right now for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the angels of the Lord. We thank you for the angels that are right, right, right now with me in this studio, God. I thank you that they will give me revelation, understanding, information, and they'll speak to me on the spot as to what you want me to say, what you want me to do. Help me to be, speak clearly. Let the fire of God be on the word tonight, God. Let that anointing of fire be upon it. God, it will bring revelation, illumination, and it will cause the light of God to shine into our hearts. And, and open up our understanding to your supernatural realm, your supernatural truth, your supernatural word, and your supernatural power. And we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight we're going to we're, we're gonna stay with the subject of the, we're on a series of this, uh, uh, and entitled The Supernatural Church. Now from that subject of the supernatural church, we're going into the realm of the supernatural gifts of the spirit. You see, because the church is supernatural because of the Holy Spirit and his gifts. The Holy Spirit and his gifts Allah, and the fruit of the Spirit what, is what makes the church supernatural. So tonight we're going we're gonna to focus in on one of the revelation gifts. One of the revelation gifts because there are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And this is something that the church needs information of. Most believers have never been been scripturally taught concerning the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. So if you stay with me in this series, you will have a good and a basic understanding. I don't know it all, but I'll, I'll share with you what the Holy Spirit reveals to me. You'll have a good basic understanding of the operation of the nine gifts of the Spirit, what they are, how to activate them, and how they are to work in helping us to fulfill this last day assignment. The nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, very important, very vital. Why? Because everything... And I say everything that God will do in the days to come and is doing now is coming through the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. One of those nine gifts operates every time God manifests his glory and power. What he did in, pa in the past, what he did through Jesus Christ, what he did in the book of Acts, all were demonstrations of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So we need to understand the spiritual gifts. And we're talking about the nine gifts now because we know they're ministry gifts. They're also servant gifts that we're going to look at in this series. The ministry gifts are the five-fold ministry or the leadership gifts. We're going to look at those. We're going to look at the servant gifts of Romans chapter 12 because there's some servant gifts. But right now we're focusing in on the supernatural nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Because this is, folks, is what we're going to operate by. Our God's going to operate through us to bring signs, wonders, miracles, put the devil where he belongs that's under our feet, and God's going to be glorified. Hallelujah. And God's going to be glorified, magnified in Jesus' name. So we, you, we're using as a foundation, you could write this down. I'm not going to turn there and read it tonight, but uh, Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6, for where the, where, the, where the angel of the Lord spoke to Zerubbabel, this is Zechariah 4, 6, and he said to Zerubbabel, through the prophet Zechariah, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. That's Zechariah 4, 6. Why? Because what all that God is doing, all that he's doing, all that he's ever done and ever will do, will come by the spirit of God. Hallelujah. He only operates by his spirit. And thank God he has given his spirit to us. He's given his spirit to you and I, and he's given to us in the fullness and the power with the fire of God. We have that same divine nature that Peter talked about. So this is how we can operate in the supernatural because we are partakers of that divine nature. Glory to God. You can read it when you get a chance. Second Peter 2 and verse 1. He says we've been partakers of that divine nature. Glory to God. Because I have divine nature. I can operate in the supernatural. You have divine nature through the Holy Spirit. And divine nature means the nature of God. We are created in the image of God. And we have the nature of God once we are born again through the Holy Spirit. So that divine nature is what causes us to be able to operate in the supernatural realm. And operate in supernatural power. Supernatural demonstrations. So tonight we're going to look at one of the revelation gifts. 
We're going to look at one of the revelation gifts. I give an over, I'm doing an overview in one of the teachings that's coming. I don't think I'd uploaded this one yet, but I'll do an overview of all nine gifts. But I'm, I'm going back and one by one singling out these, these gifts and squeezing all the juice out. In other words, all the information and all the revelation that the Holy Spirit will give me, we're going to take each gift and go back over it and that we get the understanding and the operation of each of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Are you excited about it? Glory to God, you're about to get information, revelation that's going to build us up and make us strong in the Lord and in the power of His might because it's the wisdom of the Holy Spirit that's going to bring us to maturity. The sad part about it is the church has been immature long enough because we have not been properly taught by the apostles' doctrine. Hey, amen. Acts 2.42, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Amen. And that doctrine is the doctrine of Jesus Christ. It's what Jesus taught the people, not me or not anybody else to call themselves an apostle. The apostles' doctrine is the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Doctrine means teaching, the teachings of Jesus. So this is what I come with. This is all I teach is what Jesus taught. And every apostle, every minister must teach the apostles' doctrine. Amen. So Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, we're going to look at when we read tonight. Hebrews 4.12, you can turn in your Bible to Hebrews 4.12. And we're going to, we're using for a subject, we're focusing in on the supernatural discerning of spirits. The supernatural discerning of spirits. We're using the term supernatural or the word supernatural with all of our teaching. Because every one of these gifts is supernatural. Tongues is supernatural. The interpretation of tongues is supernatural. Prophecy is supernatural. Word of knowledge is supernatural. Word of wisdom is supernatural. Working of miracles is supernatural. Gifts of healing are supernatural. Gifts of faith are supernatural. And the discerning of spirit is a supernatural gift. Now, supernatural means that it's above and beyond the natural. In other words, it's, it's an ability that comes from the supernatural realm. You see, because there's a supernatural realm outside this natural realm. And that supernatural realm is more real than the natural realm. Because everything in this supernatural world comes from everything is in this natural world our natural world we are in the natural world comes from one side of the supernatural now the supernatural has two sides there's an evil side and there's a godly side or a holy side god operates the the godly side the holy side satan operates from the evil side and i want you to know satan is in the earth but he's in the earth illegally he has power but he doesn't have authority. We have been given power and authority. You need to thank the Lord for that because I thank the Lord for that, that I have more power than the devil because I have power and authority from God, but Satan only has power. He only has dunamis. I have dunamis and exosia. Glory to God. Not only do I have dunamis and exosia, I have been given the authority to execute dunamis in the earth. And you have also. And the way this dunamis power, when I say dunamis, I'm talking about dynamite. That's where we get our English word dynamite, which is the dynamite of God. Glory to God. That spiritual dynamite that we can operate, that can release upon the works of the enemy. Because Jesus Christ came that he might destroy the works of the devil. And the way he did it is how we're going to do it. It's through the nine gifts of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I thank God for this teaching. I thank God for this season. I thank God that he's doing a new thing in a new season. Glory to God. And the new thing has to do with new information, new revelation, new understanding, which will produce new power, new authority, new glory, new fresh fire. But it comes with new understanding and new revelation. Amen. Hallelujah. So he's, giving, he's taking the revelation and the information to another level. And God's going to be glorified. So let's look at it here in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Hebrews 4, 12. Look at what it says here. It says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joint and of marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, you see, because uh, it, it mentions here the Word of God. Now, I want to put an emphasis on the Word of God tonight because the Word of God is the basis and the foundation for, for the operation of the supernatural gift of the discerning of spirits. It's based in the Word of God. All of the gifts are based in the Word of God. Why? Because it's the Bible, it's the Scriptures that shows us these gifts. 
That's why we've got to get more more in touch with the scriptures, folks. We got to get this word in us even the more. Hallelujah. We've got, we've got to meditate. We've got to read. We've got to study. We've got to focus. We've got to ask God to put this word in our hearts. Let this word come out of our mouth. God, to the point that we don't always have to be looking in the book to quote the word. Amen. We don't always have to be reading to quote the scripture. See, that's why you got to get, we got to get this word in our heart, folks. Why? Because of what's in verse 12 here. It says the word of God, verse Hebrews 4.12, Hebrews 4.12 says the word of God is quick. Now that word quick means alive. Hallelujah. And the, when the Bible uses uh, quickening, it means make alive. In other words, this word is alive. Glory to God. When you get it inside our hearts, we come alive. Glory to God. When the word of God, that living word come, come in us, well, I'm fired up tonight. Oh God, I'm burning. I'm rolling from the top of the hill. Glory to God. When we get this word, this living word in us, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, we become alive. Hallelujah. So the word quick here in, in the scriptural sense, in the spiritual sense, means alive. Now, it's also fast. The word can be fast. Now, a prick can be fast. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. But but in the spiritual sense, it means alive. The word is alive and it's powerful. Glory to God. I'm telling you, though anything that the devil is afraid of is the word of God because the word is powerful. It has more power than the devil. This is what Jesus used in that wilderness. Jesus quoted the word of God against Satan in that temptation. When Jesus was fasting for 40 days, Jesus said, man should not live by word, by, by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That backed the devil up. Hallelujah. The devil has no answer for the written and spoken word of God. Why? The, why? Because the word of God is alive and it's powerful. Hebrews 4.12 says, he says, and it's not only alive and powerful, it is sharper than any two-edged sword. Glory to God. This word, this word is sharper than any razor. It's, it is sharper than any barber's razor. Glory to God. It's, 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 it's sharper than razor sharp. Oh, hallelujah. It says it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Let me tell you something. Now, a razor can be sharp. Man, you, you got to be careful. You cut yourself with a razor and, 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 for you, and for you know it, you don't even know you've been cut. Amen. Hallelujah. But this word, the word of God in the spirit is sharper than any razor. Glory to God. It's, it's, it's better than razor sharp. Sharper than any two-edged sword. And it is a two-edged sword. This word is a two-edged sword. It'll cut going out and it'll cut coming in. It'll cut going out and it'll cut going and coming back in. In other words, it'll cut when we send it out and it'll cut us when it comes back to us. In other words, it convicts. It, it, it convicts. To cut means to convict. It's, it because it's sharp. Glory to God. I said the word of God is sharp. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing of asunder of soul and spirit. Other words, it could separate. It could separate things that we can't even separate. Other words, it could it could separate uh, the soul from the spirit. Other words, it could it could designate or, 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 or identify the soul and the spirit, and it could bring a dividing line between the soul and the spirit. This is the word of God. Other words, the word will let you know what, which is what is of the soul and what is of the spirit. It'll let you know what is of the carnal nature and as well let you know what is of the Holy Ghost. It will let you know which is of, of demonic origin and it'll let you know which is of Holy Ghost origin. Origin means beginning. It lets you, I mean, it separates. The Bible says it's the binding asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. The joints and the marrow. In other words, the joints, the joints and the bones are the joints and the ligaments. In other words, this word is sharp. This word, can, this word can separate the joints and the marrow. And look at what it says here in verse 12. And is a discerner. And is a discerner. And is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. It discerns the thoughts and intents of the heart. What does? The word of God. Hallelujah. That's why we got to get more of this word in us, folks. That's why we got to get more of this word in us, brothers and sisters. We got to get this word in our hearts. Hallelujah. And get it coming out of our mouth. Release that sword out of your mouth on a daily basis. Declare some things and they shall be established. And the light will shine on your ways. We can call those things which are not as though they are. Hallelujah. Why? Because the, when the word of God promises us, we can declare the promises of God and God will bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the Bible said it's powerful. Glory to God. It's, it, it can reverse. It can re reverse the laws of nature. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What, what can? The power that's in the word of God. 
and it says it's a deserter. So that means if it's a deserter, if we're going to have supernatural discernment, if we're going to have the supernatural discerning of spirits. Now, I, I want to get away from this word discernment now because the word discernment is a natural, is natural discerning. But, 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 but the gift we're talking about is the discerning of spirits. Just to have discernment, we can discern with our natural means, with our natural senses. So, so discernment is different from the discerning of spirits. We're talking about the discerning of spirits. And we're going to get into this a little bit deeper tonight. And we're going to understand some things concerning the discerning of spirits. But Hebrews 4.12 is very important, very pivotal, very foundational in us understanding the supernatural discerning of spirits. Why? Because he says the word is the discerner. The word is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. In other words, through the, the gift of supernatural, the, the, the discerning of spirits, we can supernaturally know the thoughts and the intents of the hearts of people. This is why this is so important, folks. And if there's any, this is this particular gift has, I operate in this gift just about more than any other gift. Amen. I, hallelujah. I thank God for the Holy Ghost that he, he gives me the discerning of spirits when I need it. And we're going to, you got to know that, that I don't always have the discerning of spirits. We don't always have these spiritual gifts. You see, because these gifts, are, I use the analogy, are like tools in the toolbox, tools in my toolbox. If I need a screwdriver to drive in a Phillips head screw, I get a Phillips screwdriver, drive in the Phillips head screw, then I put the, put the screwdriver back in the toolbox. Amen. I need a hammer. I drive the nail. When I get done with the hammer, I don't walk around with a hammer in my hand all day. I put the hammer back in the toolbox until I need it again. That's how these gifts operate, folks. The gift that the Holy Spirit imparts to me more so than probably any other than the gift of prophecy, is the discerning of spirits. And you see, this gift is, is how we are able to accurately and effectively operate the ministry of deliverance. We've got to be able to discern these demons, folks. And the, the supernatural discerning of spirits help us to do that because it discerns the, the thoughts. And you see, a lot of time, all we, can, all we know is what we see. All we know is what we see with the natural eye. But the, but the discerning of spirits helps us to see what's not seen. Help us to see behind the scenes. We can see the thoughts and the intents of, of, of a person's heart. Folks, and this is so much needed today. I'm telling you, man, but we're, 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 we got so many wolves in sheep's clothing. So many people getting taken advantage of. So many people being deceived by, 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 by people who look good and sound good and appear to be good. But this word, he said, it's the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of our heart. It'll let you see what's really in the person's heart. It'll let you see what their motives really are. And this is why this gift is so important. So many people have been taken unaware in marriage, in relationships, in business, in church settings, because they were not able to supernaturally discern the thoughts and the intents of the hearts of people. Folks, we need this gift operating. We need it now, and we're going to need it more so in the days to come. Because you see, the devil himself, he can make it look real good. He can make himself sound real good. But if we can discern by the Holy Ghost, when we have the supernatural discernment, he will not fool us. He will not trap us, nor will he take us unaware. A lot of people are being trapped by other people. They're being taken advantage of by other people because they're unable to supernaturally discern the spirit that's operating. They don't know what's in the person's heart. They don't know their real thoughts. Amen. We can know what they say out of their mouth by hearing out of hearing their words, but what's really in their heart. That's where, we're, that's where we need this gift. That's where we need the supernatural discerning of spirits. And you see, because it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. It's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And without it, without this gift operating, we can be taken unaware, we could be deceived, we could be trapped, we could be brought in a situation that we could we could have not, we could have avoided if we were properly taught how to operate the gift of the, the supernatural gifts of the discerning of spirits. Very needed today, folks. Very needed today, because there are a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing. Clothing. There are a lot of false prophets. 
There are even some false apostles that Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians 11, 14 and 15. There are some false apostles. So everybody that calls himself an apostle is not an apostle. And we need to know this and we need to know how to how 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 to how to how to measure them by their fruits, how to test them by their fruits. The Bible says, try the spirits, try the spirits to see where they are of God. How do we try our spirit? By examining the fruit, examining the fruit of that person's life, examining the functions, examining the functions. So if they're not functioning as an apostle, it doesn't matter what title they have, that's not an apostle. Glory to God, you gotta have the function. I said, you, they got to have the function. A prophet has to have the, have the function. Amen. So so, so these are things that are for, very important for us in these last days because the devil's a deceiver. And you want you to know deception is at a high point and it's going to go to the high, a higher level. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, when he taught on the last days, he said, be careful that no man deceive you. And you see, we can be deceived. And we don't know the operation of supernatural, the, the supernatural discerning of spirits. A amen. And you see, this is one of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit because this is so important. That's why he says the word of God is quick. That means it's alive. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing. Other words, it's a, it, it, it's a jabber. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You could jab the devil with it. Hallelujah. You could jab it and rip him to smithereens with it. You cut him up. Glory to God. With the sword of the spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm cutting up ignorance. I'm destroying the spirit of religion. I'm destroying deception. I'm, I'm, I'm cutting it to I'm cutting it to ribbons with the word of God to open our understanding so that we can understand the truth and we can operate this supernatural gift of the discerning of spirit. I believe this teaching is going to activate the gifts of the spirit in our lives like they've never been activated before. Because what we hear, what we receive, what we believe, I believe God will cause to manifest in our lives. Amen. Let these let these teachings activate the gifts of the Spirit to operate in you and in myself on a higher level. Hallelujah. Because I want you to know there is a shift in the supernatural realm. Yes, there is. There's a shift in the supernatural realm. And, and I believe God's taking us to a higher level of understanding, a higher level of wisdom, a higher level of knowledge, so that we can operate at a higher level of power and authority and glory hallelujah but it comes through us first getting a foundation in the word of god you see because i thank god for the holy ghost how he led me when i first got saved he told me he led me to read this read this new testament two times and he told me to read it a third time and i read it and recorded my voice into a tape recorder and then just recently when we went on a fast i believe it was the end of 2021 that december 10th i think we went on a fast and 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 and, and and 2021, uh, just before we came over to the new year, we did a fast in December. And the, the Holy Spirit told me to read the New Testament again. So I read it again during that during that 10-day fast just to get this word fresh, get it stirred back up in me. Why? Because the word is the discerner. I said the word is the discerner. Didn't he say that in Hebrews 4.12? The word is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And it says in verse 13, Neither is there any creature that is not manifested in his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him or whom we have to do. In other words, God sees everything. God sees what's in the natural. God sees what's in the supernatural. God sees what we can see. And God sees behind the scenes. And you see, what God, God has done through the Holy Spirit, he has given us some of his ability to see into the supernatural. Notice I said some of his ability. Why? Because the Bible says in Deuteronomy 29, 29, write it down, read it when you get a chance. Deuteronomy 29 in the Old Testament, 29, 29, it says the secret things belong only to God, but the things that are revealed are revealed unto us and to our children that we may be able to do all the words of his law. You see, there are some things that God will reveal to us. There's some things that he's revealing to me so that we will know what to do. Glory to God, hallelujah, so that we can, that we can carry out his assignment and live according to his laws and destroy the works of the devil that he has designed us to be, supernatural people in Jesus' name, okay? Okay, now, now let's look at this. Now, this is what we want to try to emphasize in the teaching tonight, that these nine gifts of the Holy Spirit are supernatural gifts. We will look at the, at the one gift, one of the revelation gifts, which is the deserting of spirits. The supernatural discerning of spirits. You know that there are three revelation gifts. The three revelation gifts are the word of wisdom, 
word of knowledge and the supernatural discerning of spirits. In other words, they're all a supernatural, supernatural wisdom, supernatural uh, word of knowledge and, and the supernatural discerning of spirits. And, and, and you see, this is so important. And, you, and, you, and, and because of this, uh, God is pouring out this information in this season. He's doing a new thing in this season. And yes, there is a shift in the supernatural realm and he's shifting us to a new level of understanding. Hallelujah. And we thank God for the Holy Spirit. Okay, so what we want to focus on tonight, what we want to try to, 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 to impart to, to you tonight as we teach tonight is the foundation for effectiveness in operating in the supernatural discerning of spirits. And right here in Hebrews 4.12, we have, we have a major part of the foundation. Notice I said a major part of the foundation, which is the word of God. I believe the word of God should be first. Why? Because the Bible says it is the discerner. Hallelujah. So if I get the word of God in me working, I get the word working in my life. I speak it. I meditate on it. I quote it. I live it. Hallelujah. I've got the discerner on the inside of me, devil, and you cannot take it out. Amen. I know you. I'll see you coming. I'll see you at a distance. Why? Because I got the discerner inside me. That's why we got to put this word in us, folks. We got to eat more of this word. Hallelujah. Ezekiel said, I saw the roll and I ate it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We got to start eating this word, folks to get it operating in our lives, okay? That's one of the foundation. The other half of the foundation for the operation of the gifts is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So we've got to get the word working on us, which is the written word uh, follow, uh, that follows the living word, who is Jesus, hallelujah, the living word, then the written word, which is the scriptures in our hearts, in our minds, in our soul, coming out of our mouth. And the other part of the foundation for the operation of all of the gifts, as well as the supernatural uh, discerning of spirits is the baptism of the Holy Ghost in fire. Glory to God. You see, because the gifts are activated through the baptism of the Holy Spirit in fire. Matthew 3, 11, He says, he shall baptize you. John the Baptist said, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Who was he talking about? Jesus. Jesus is the baptizer with the Holy Ghost and fire. So the other part of the operation of the foundation for the gifts is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you see, much of the church, much of the American church, uh, I call it the American church, uh, which is the natural church, do not believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. That's why the, that's why the most, most Christians, most church members don't know nothing about the supernatural. They know nothing about the gifts of the spirit. Why? Because they're natural. You see, because if there's a natural, there's a supernatural. If there's a supernatural, there's a natural. Amen? So if there's a supernatural discerning of spirits, there's a natural discerning of spirits. And you see, we can naturally discern some things just by our natural five senses. But God wants to take us to a higher level of discerning, which is the supernatural discerning that comes through the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we've got to get the foundation under us. You cannot build a strong building without a foundation. The first part of the foundation is the Word of God. Hallelujah. Hebrews 4.12 tells us that the Word is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the hearts of people. Glory to God. The second part of that foundation is the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues that starts the activity of the operation of the gifts. Tongues is the first sign that you baptize with the Holy Spirit. So a lot of people said, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. Filling, baptism, really meaning the same thing. So if I'm filled, I'm baptized with the Holy Ghost. And But the first sign that you're filled, the first sign that we're baptized with the Holy Ghost is tongues. Is praying in the spirit, praying in, the, in our heavenly language. Glory to God. So if you're not filled, if you're not praying in your heavenly language, you don't pray in tongues, you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I say that again. If you don't pray in tongues, my my, my Baptist brothers and sisters, my, my, my Methodist brothers and sisters, my Presbyterian brothers and sisters, my, my Catholic brothers and sisters, my, my Lutheran brothers and sisters, I call you brothers and sisters because if you're saved, you're my brother. But I want you to know the truth, my brothers and sisters, that if you're not speaking with other tongues, you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And we, we, we've, been, we've been sitting on the leaders who are not filled with the Holy Ghost. So if the leaders are not filled with the Holy Ghost, the people won't be filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? Because many of our preachers have been taught in their schools of ministry, which I call cemeteries. They've been taught in their cemeteries. We call them seminaries. That the gifts of the Spirit are not operating for the day. For today, but I want you to know the gifts of, of the Spirit are still active. They're still operating, and He wants us to be able to operate in the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit. But see, that's why we got to be exposed to the Apostles' doctrine. 
This teaching comes with the apostles' doctrine. Hey, amen. Religion don't teach you this. Amen. Well, when I say religion, I'm talking about Protestant religion. Protestant religion is the denominational setup. And, and see, that's why God's calling these people out of that system. And hallelujah. You got to come out of that system, pastors. You got to come out of that system, uh, Brother Bishop. Amen. You got to come out of that system, believers. Hallelujah. And come over into this apostolic move. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come over into this book of Acts move with the church. and Because uh, that's what God is pouring out his spirit to. But foundation is important. The foundation is very important. Okay. So uh, uh, we need to understand the purpose of the, of, of the supernatural uh, discerning of spirit. What is the purpose of it? We're going to look at that. What what is the supernatural discerning of spirit of spirit? What re, what really is it? What it is, and, and this is important. And, and and what spirits do we discern? We need to understand. We need to understand what spirits do we discern, and how to discern accurately and properly the spirits that need discerning. How to discern and uh, properly and accurately the spirits that we need to discern. Now we, we need to know the foundation. We need to know what the, the supernatural discerning of spirit is. We need to know the purpose of it. We need to know how to accurately and properly discern. And we need to know the purpose of the gift of the discerning of spirit. Now, Satan has a counterfeit. Satan has counterfeits. I say he has a counterfeit. He has many counterfeits. You see, because the devil is a counterfeiter. There's nothing original with Satan. The only thing that's original with him is sin and corruption. He started that. But what mostly what Satan does, he corrupts and he copies what God has done. So he has counterfeits for the revelation gifts. He has a counterfeit for the revelation gifts, and it's called the spirit of divination. Divination is the counterfeit for the revelation gifts. And Satan operates the spirit, he operates in the spirit of divination through false prophets, through false apostles, through false disciples, false believers, to the false church. Amen. Because if there's a natural, there's a supernatural. And if there's a real, there's a false. Satan has a false. Just about everything that God has real, he has false. And he has a counterfeit operation for the supernatural discerning of spirits, which is the revel has to do with one of the revelation. And his counterfeit is divination. It's the spirit of divination. And he operates di divination through familiar spirits. He has familiar spirits who can say things accurately, who know things accurately, because they're evil spirits that are in the evil side of the spirit realm, and they are familiar with families. They're familiar with people in certain and family lines. Familiar spirits. And, 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 and the strong man over the familiar spirit is the spirit of divination. We know it as the spirit of python, amen, which is that constrictor. Ever seen that, that boa constrictor, that, that big snake that wraps itself and squeezes its victim to death and kills its victim by, by, by squeezing it to death, sucking the air or taking the air right out? That's the spirit that this coronavirus operates by. It's that, it's that python spirit, amen, hallelujah. In other words, it squeezes the air. It restricts the breathing. That python spirit, that's the spirit of divination. And what it does, it squeezes the spiritual life out of God's people. It's out to squeeze the spiritual life out of God's people. But it's the counterfeit for the revelation of, uh, it's the counterfeit for the revelation gifts. And it's the counterfeit for the supernatural discerning of spirits. Amen. That spirit of divination operates through false prophets, through, through psychics, through, through conjure men, hallelujah, through fortune tellers, through palm readers, to root workers, to sorcerers, amen, amen. I, I, and I believe that, that, that the Holy Spirit is opening this up in these last days to destroy this work of this work of the devil, this this work of divination. Every false prophet operates by the spirit of Python, amen. That, that's that spirit of divination. Paul had to deal with it in Acts chapter 16, verse 16. You remember the story with the, with the demon-possessed girl who the, who, who, were, who, were, who the leaders over her, rulers over her, were using her to make money? by getting her to tell people's fortune, amen? And, and it aggravated Paul to the point that one day that Paul spoke to the spirit. He spoke to the spirit of divination, commanded the spirit to come out of her, and she no longer operated by that spirit. That's why we need this gift to operate, folks, in order to operate the ministry of deliverance accurately. This is one of the purposes. Paul cast the demon out the girl. But I want you to know they put Paul in prison, Paul and Silas in prison, beat them, locked them up, and when they were put in prison, God set a revival in the jailhouse. He shook that prison when Paul and Silas prayed 
Why? Because but but God used what the enemy meant for evil. God turned it around for good. But but, but because Paul kept the spirit of divination out of this girl, it aggravated those people, aggravated the magistrates, and they persecuted Paul and Silas. But God vindicated them. God started a revival in Philippi. And it's believed that the Philippian jailer's house was where the Philippian church got started. Glory to God. But Paul had to cast the demon out of her. He cast the spirit of divination out. Why? Because that's the counterfeit. That's the counterfeit. And, and you see, this supernatural discerning of spirits is going to help us to discern when somebody is prophesying by the spirit of divination or by a familiar spirit. There's something about that what they say is just not going to set right within us. You see, because Satan has a counterfeit and, 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 and the Holy Spirit, the discerning of spirit will help us to recognize, identify and confront the counterfeit. Hallelujah. You see, because we got to start confronting some things, folks. We got to start speaking out against this evil that's happening because I'm telling you, we, we're getting near the end. And, and we've got to, we've got to, we've got to come forth. The church got to arise, glory to God. And we've got to rise with some knowledge. We got to rise with some wisdom. We got to rise with some understanding. Then the one of the ways to which these gifts operate, we've got to desire them. We've got to desire them. First Corinthians 14, one says, desire spiritual gifts, desire the supernatural, uh, discerning of spirits. Other words, ask God for it. Ask God for it to operate in your life. Amen. Okay. So let's look at this a little bit further. Okay. Now let's look into the discerning of spirits. Now to discern means to know. It means to know the spirit that's operating because it's the discerning of spirits. It's the discerning of spirits. It's to know the spirit that's operating in the person, in the church service, in the business, in the home, in the house, in the family, in the children, hallelujah, in the co-worker, hallelujah. It gives us the ability to know what spirit is operating it helps us to recognize to perceive by the holy spirit the spirit that's operating in a person and folks i want you to know uh, uh, this this gift has operated through me on many occasions especially in the ministry of deliverance glory to god this is how we've been able to be so effective in deliverance over the last 20 close to 25 years we've been in ministry we're doing deliverance and, and it's, the, it's the holy ghost revealing to us the spirit that's operating that which is in the unseen realm so, so we are able to recognize, discern, perceive, and identify the spirit that's operating. That's what it means. That's, that's what to discern means. Okay? Oh, the, okay. The, the gift now of the discerning of spirit is one of the nine gifts of the spirit that is given to the church. It's one of the weapons. Now, the gift of the discerning of spirits is one of the weapons of our warfare. This is a weapon of our warfare. Glory to God. And hallelujah. We need to be able to wield this weapon. We need to know how to use it. But it's a weapon of our warfare. It's a weapon of our warfare through which we destroy the works of the devil. And you see, this gift is a weapon of the apostolic church. And this is a weapon that the devil wish you didn't have. Amen. Not only is it, is it a weapon, it's a tool. The gift, the supernatural gift of the discerning of spirits is a tool for building the church. It's a tool for building the lives of believers. Hallelujah. I, I, the Holy Ghost has had me. I'm on a building assignment with this, with this teaching with these teachings on, on the supernatural. So, so, so in order to build the church, why? Because these nine gifts are the tools. And like I said, the tools are for building. And now he's given us the tools and he's going to come back. And when, when he comes back and when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, do you, for him to judge us according to our works, he's going to ask us, one of the questions I believe he's going to ask us, what did you do with my tools? I gave you tools to build with. What did you do with my tools? Why? Because the gift of the nine gifts of the spirit, as well as the supernatural gifts of the discerning of spirits are tools that we are to build. Amen. And like I told you, the tools are given to us to carry out the assignment. And then we put it back in the toolbox. We don't always have the gift of the discerning of spirits. We don't always possess the gifts of healing. We don't always possess the gifts of supernatural prophecy. We don't always possess the gift of faith. Hallelujah. But they're tools for building. I believe that building the church, you build the people. By, I believe in building the church is by building the people. Amen. But the gifts are tools of for building the church. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. So that means if you can build it, you got to have some tools. Amen. You're going to build a house, you got to have some tools. Amen. You're going to build spiritually, we got to have tools. So the, so the gifts of the spirit and the supernatural discerning of spirit is, is one of the tools for building. First of all, build your own life. Glory to God, then you can build the lives of others. It's a tool for building. 
It has a supernatural ability to see into the spirit realm and to know what spirit is operating, to discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Glory to God. To know what spirit is operating in a church service, in a person's life, in a company, in a, in a home, in your children. You got. We can know what spirit is operating. In other words, the Holy Ghost will tell you. The Holy Ghost will tell me what demon I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with. He'll, ha he'll tell you what spirit is operating. He'll, he'll let us know uh, what spirit is operating. And, and, and we need to know to be able to see behind the scenes. And also, uh, we, we need to know how do we discern? How do we discern? In other words, the process for discerning comes through, number one, being born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. Having the Word of God dwelling in our hearts on a regular day, a working knowledge of the scriptures. Hallelujah. This is how we discern. We got to be born again. Got to be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. A amen. And, 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 and when we're filled with the Holy Spirit and fire, we can operate in the gifts. Now, uh, on how, let's go to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Hebrews chapter 5. And verse 13 and 14. How do we discern? How do we discern the process of accurate supernatural discerning? Verse 13 of Hebrews chapter 5. I'll read two verses, Hebrews 13, 5, 13, and 14. Listen to what it says. He said, For everyone that uses milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. You see, we've got to get on some meat, folks. Hallelujah. What I'm sharing with you here tonight is meat. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This this is steak. Hallelujah. You need your steak knife for this one. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, because we, we can't always live off of milk. We've got to get to the meat. And I believe God has raised us some people that you're ready to eat some meat. Amen. I'm talking spiritual meat. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about steak or pork. Amen. I don't eat pork. I don't eat steak. Amen. I only eat fish and chicken. But I'm talking about spiritual meat. I'm, ta I'm talking about spiritual meat. Amen. And you see this, when you get in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews, you're in the meat. Hallelujah. Book of Revelation, meat. Book of Daniel, meat. Ezekiel, meat. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we're in the book of Hebrews here. So we're in one of those meat restaurants. Hallelujah. Okay. He said, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth unto them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So how are we going to discern? We discern by exercise. We've got to exercise, spiritual exercise, in order to build ourselves up to accurately and properly discern. Now, spiritual exercise works just like physical exercise. So if I want to build my body physically, I'm going to exercise. I'm going to walk. I'm going to ride my bike. I'm, go I'm going to I'm going to do uh, 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 cardio exercises in order to build my body physically. Amen. So if I'm going to build my my spirit man and build myself spiritually, I've got to exercise. The, the supernatural gift, as all of the gifts, operate through spiritual exercise. Now, just like we have natural senses and we got five natural senses we have five spiritual senses and we got to we must exercise those spiritual senses look at what it says in verse 14 who by reason of use have their senses exercised their senses exercised to discern both good and evil now we talk about our senses exercise it's not talking about our natural senses it's talking about our spiritual senses in other words, we have spiritual sight, we have spiritual hearing, we have spiritual smelling, we have spiritual taste, and we have spiritual touching or feeling. In other words, we got to exercise those senses. Hallelujah. Just like we exercise in the natural. You can, we, can, we can exercise in the spirit. So I'm going to tell you, how do we exercise in the spirit? Well, I'm glad you're asking. Spiritual exercise. Number one is prayer. Number one is intercession. Number one is time in the secret place. Prayer is a spiritual exercise. Exercise means practice. Practice means do a thing till you're good at it. Hallelujah. If a, if a, if a musician or a minstrel practices, he does it till he's good at it. Uh, hallelujah. If a basketball player practice shooting free throws, like those little NBA players who shoot like 1,500 free throws at a, at a practice session, they do it until they're good at it. We've got to practice until we're good at it. 
We've got to pray until we're good at praying because prayer, I believe, is number one spiritual exercise. I'm talking about praying in the spirit, praying in our understanding, spending time in that spirit and that secret place, spiritual exercise. Hallelujah. How much spiritual exercise of prayer do you get I, or in a daily base, on a daily basis? Prayer is spiritual exercise, praying in tongues, praying in our understanding. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Prayer is number one spiritual exercise, fasting, spiritual exercise. Hallelujah. That's why he said, have your spiritual senses exercised to discern both good and evil, to discern both good and evil. So what are we discerning? We're discerning good and we're discerning evil. So that means we're not only discerning demons, we're discerning the good, which is the Holy Spirit. We can discern when the Holy Spirit's operating. We can also discern when demons are operating. Okay. Fasting. Exercise number two, reading the word of God, reading the word of God. Exercise number three is reading the word of God. In my list here, exercise, you got to read, you got to meditate. That's another form of spiritual exercise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You got to hear the word, exercise your hearing by hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. Speak it yourself, hear it yourself, hear others speak and teach it. Amen. You're getting exercise tonight. You're, we're getting spiritual exercise right now. I'm exercising, you're exercising in order to uh, enhance our ability to discern both good and evil. It comes through spiritual exercise, okay? Uh, ministering the word, ministering the word. Whenever we minister the word, whenever we preach, teach, or prophesy, that's spiritual exercise. And the enemy will have you afraid to minister the word. Why? Because he don't want you to exercise. He don't want you to exercise. Hallelujah. Some of you say, boy, I hope he don't ever text me. I hope I don't ever get one of his texts. No, no, why? You're afraid to exercise. You see, be, be, because because the enemy, the, the enemy don't want you to exercise. He don't want you to minister the word because he knows if you minister the word, you're going to get strong. You're going to get built up. You're going to be able to supernaturally discern because ministry of the word is an exercise. It's a spiritual exercise. The more you do it, the more you practice it, the better you get at it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, and you see, you got to get rid of the spirit of fear. Hallelujah. You got to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Why? Because the ministry of the word, preaching, teaching, prophesying, casting out devils, all, all spiritual exercise. And, and, that, and that, the next one in my list is deliverance. Deliverance is a spiritual exercise because these exercises give us opportunities to discern. Amen. Ministry of the word, when you're preaching, teaching, prophesying in a service, it helps us to discern the Holy Spirit. It helps us to discern when demons are operating. It helps us to discern the flesh when it's operating. See, I just gave you the three areas, of, the three spirits we have to discern, which we're going to hit again. But but spiritual exercise is deliverance. Cast it out evil spirits. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because you have to discern in deliverance. I said we have to discern in deliverance. I never know in my mind, I can never know in my natural mind what demon I'm dealing with. The Holy Spirit will show me. Why? Because the supernatural gift of discerning of spirits is a must in the deliverance ministry. And this is why the Holy Spirit is putting an emphasis on this supernatural discerning of spirits. Folks, because we're going to have to do deliverance. You're going to have to do some deliverance. We're going to have to cast out evil spirits out of the people. Amen. Hallelujah. They're coming. They're coming bound. They're coming demon possessed. They're coming oppressed. And we're going to have to be able to discern. So spiritual exercise. Hallelujah. And like I said, prayer is exercise number one. Intercession, exercise number one in exercising our spiritual senses. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, and, and prayer in the spirit. That's why uh, Jude, Jude said in Jude verse 20, building yourself up on your most holy spirit by praying in the Holy Ghost. Building yourself up. Oh, building what self? Not my natural self. Not my arms. Not the muscle in my arm. But my spirit man. Hallelujah. You put muscle on your spirit man when you pray in tongues. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How about let's put some muscle on the spirit man. Let's pray in tongues for about a couple seconds there. Come on, jog it. Hey, stay Hallelujah. God just got me some exercise there. Did you get your exercise then? Why? Because spiritual exercise is done through praying in the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and you see, we, we, we discern accurately. We discern properly through spiritual exercise. And the things that I just lifted, listed are spiritual exercise. And then in verse 14 of Hebrews 5.14, he says, by reason of use, having their spirit, their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. 
to discern both good and evil. So if we're going to properly and accurately discern, we've got to exercise. Hallelujah. We've got to exercise every day. We've got to exercise all day long. Hallelujah. Spay in the word. Read the word. Meditate the word. Speak the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Fast. Pray. Amen. Because uh, supernatural discerning of spirit operates through spiritual exercise. And the sad part about it, most people don't spiritually exercise. Most leaders don't teach the people the spiritual exercise. Hallelujah. You see, that's why the church is so, 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 so weak and so beggarly and so fragmented and so inconsistent and so unstable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They want to live for God and live for the devil. They want to live for God and live for themselves. Why? Because they are lack understanding of the supernatural realm. And God's going to be glorified. Okay? Okay. In the next sense, we need to establish what spirits we are to discern. What spirits we are to discern. Okay, number one, we've got to be able to, number one, discern the Holy Spirit. We must be able to discern where the Holy Spirit is operating. And we must discern accurately the Holy Spirit. And what thing you don't want to do is misdiscern the Holy Spirit. You see, because this is a dangerous thing. We're going to look at it in another teaching. But we got to first be able to discern when the Holy Spirit's operating. Being able to spiritually sense when the presence of God is there. Can you do that? Does that happen to you? Can you just, you just sense when the presence of God is there? Hallelujah. He said, how's that? You just know it in your know. Glory to God. You just sense that glory is there. The Holy Ghost just revealed that this is the Spirit of God. We've got to be able to first be able to discern the Holy Spirit. Because if we can't discern the Holy Spirit, folks, we can call the Holy Spirit evil. And you don't want to do that. We must first be able to discern the operation of the Holy Spirit. You see, because the discerning of spirits is just not for demons, but it's for us to be able to discern when the Holy Spirit's operating and what the Holy Spirit wants to do and is doing. We got to discern this, folks. We've got to discern this. And a lot of times it causes us to change our agenda. When the Holy Spirit seems to be moving in a different way, we got to move with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. A amen. We got to move with the Holy Spirit. Well, and that's being able to discern the Holy Spirit's presence and discern what he's doing, how he wants to do, do it, and who he wants to do it through. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Ghost just might tell you to use somebody else to pray. He might tell you to use a uh, call of somebody else. Amen. To read that scripture, to call somebody else to preach, to prophesy, to teach. Hallelujah. You got to discern the Holy Spirit and what he wants to do. Hallelujah. That's how I operate. I operate by the discerning of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And I thank God I know the Holy Spirit's voice now better than I have ever known it before. Hallelujah. I know his voice. I don't say something told me. I said the Holy Ghost said. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost spoke to me. Hallelujah. So we got to first discern the Holy Spirit. We got to also, number two, what, what spirits we must discern? We must be able to discern the angels. We must be able to discern the angels when they're present. We must discern when the seraphims are there, which are the angels of fire. We must discern when the cherubims are present. We must be able to discern angels. The, whole, the, the supernatural discerning of spirits will help us to discern when the angels are operating, when the angels are present. Glory to God. And we must have this, folks. Hallelujah. So we must know when those seraphims are there. We must know when those cherubims, those warring cherubims are there, when those angels of healing are there. Hallelujah. Well, we, we can discern angels. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter Hebrews chapter 1. I'll go back to Hebrews chapter 1. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost just quickened this to me. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7. Hebrews chapter 1, 7. He said, And the angels saith, and of the angels saith he, who maketh his angels spirits. Hebrews 1, 7. He maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. So he tells us that his angels are spirits. His angels are spirits. Hebrews 1, 7. He makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Okay, verse 14, Hebrews 1, 14, Are not they all ministering spirits sent forth the ministers to them who are the heirs of salvation? In other words, the angels are also holy and godly spirits because the angels of God come from the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the angels are spirits, and we need to be able to discern when the angels are present and when they are operating. Sometimes they'll even be seen. Sometimes they'll even be seen in our midst. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because we can discern when the angels are operating. And we must also be able to discern the human spirit. We must also be, be able to discern the human spirit. The Holy Spirit, the angels, and the human spirit. And I'm going to go to, I'm gonna go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 
1 Corinthians chapter 2 at verse 11. 1 Corinthians 2, 11. Talking about the human spirit. You see, because we all have a human spirit and we must understand, uh, uh, be able to discern when that human spirit is functioning, when the human spirit is speaking. And the human spirit is nothing but the flesh. That's all the human spirit is, really, it's the flesh. And we've got to know when it's the flesh and it's not the spirit of God. Okay, so verse 11, Hebrews, uh, no, Hebrews, but 1 Corinthians 2, 11. 1 Corinthians 2, 11. He said, well, 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 what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man but the spirit of god okay so hebrews 2 11 mentions there what man knows the things of man but the spirit of man so uh, uh, the spirit of man only knows the things of man amen so the spirit of man is going to speak the things of the natural that's why a lot of times when people prophesy it may not be the holy spirit but it could be the human spirit it could be a spirit that's just telling people what they want to hear. Amen. So we got to be able to discern when it's the human spirit. Amen. Because the human spirit also can prophesy falsely. Amen. But it's the Holy Spirit that's accurate and the Holy Spirit that gives us the truths of God. But we got to be able to discern and the Holy Ghost will let you know that's the flesh. That's the human spirit. Amen. And a lot of times even in deliverance, the Holy Spirit has told me. That's the flesh. You cannot cast that flesh out. That person just needs to stop doing what he or she is doing. You see, because the, a lot of times folks just want attention and deliverance. And if they just want attention, that's that human spirit. That's that flesh operating. Amen. And the Holy Spirit will let you know that it's, that it's the flesh. It's the human spirit operating. And, and you see, uh, I come to know too, that when I get to a place where the deliverance seems to be locked up and that spirit don't seem to move, a lot of times it's the flesh. And sometimes I'll ask the Holy Ghost, is this the flesh? Or just I, do I need to go deeper in finding out the, the identity of this spirit? Hallelujah. And then sometimes he'll tell me, he says, it's the flesh. He says, it's the flesh. Leave that person alone and tell them they need to straighten their life up and they need to stop wanting attention. Amen. You see, because that's the work of the human spirit. The human spirit causes people to prophesy by a familiar spirit. Also, see, because the human spirit also works with that demonic spirit. And we've got to be able to, the Holy Spirit, the supernatural discerning of spirits will help us to discern the human spirit. Okay, and the last place, the discerning of spirits will help us to discern when it's an evil spirit. Hallelujah, we can discern an evil spirit. And a lot of times, the Holy Spirit have, a, have allowed me to discern an evil spirit by allowing me to see a certain animal either behind the person or around the person or on, a, on the person's head. Like one time he showed me an octopus on a lady's head. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm standing, standing in front of her in the prayer line. And in the spirit, I saw a vision of an octopus on her head. Hallelujah. And right away, the Holy Ghost said, mind control spirit. Amen. And I cast out the spirit of mind control. She fell on the floor. She got set free. But he'll show you in a vision. It could be an animal he'll show you. Or uh, in a dream, he may show you snakes. If he show you snakes in a dream, that means there are evil spirits around you. Either in your home, in your work, or in your surroundings, in your setting. Snakes. I bet you show it by creatures, by animals. Hallelujah. Evil spirits are seen sometimes through visions. Frogs. You see frogs in a dream. Those are unclean spirits. Amen. People are walking around with frogs, t-shirts, and, and uh, frog pictures and all that. In other words, that's a sign of unclean spirits. And you see, we need to understand these things that we can discern by things that people, uh, may, that the Spirit of God may show us in the spirit realm through a vision or through a dream. Amen. So if I get a dream that has a snake in the dream, that means that there is an evil spirit operating. And, and, and about a year ago, the Lord showed me a, a, a python snake in a dream. It was a big, a huge snake. And I killed it. I killed that snake with three hits with a baseball bat. I killed that snake in that dream. Glory to God. And hallelujah, the Holy Ghost said, you just conquered that evil that was around you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What, what he did, he shows it to us in a dream or in a vision. He may show you in an animal like a bat, an owl. Amen. Hallelujah. A, 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 a vulture. Amen. A raven. He may show you a blackbird. He may show you uh, some kind of creature, an alligator, a crocodile, a snake. A a amen. Any type of snake. In other words, we can discern by seeing things in a vision or seeing things in a dream. 
Hallelujah. Some, some dogs. Hallelujah. Every time I see a pit bull, I, 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 I discern an evil spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That, them pit bull dogs, man, I don't trust them. Hallelujah. I'm buying that spirit up. Amen. Because you see, these evil spirits can work through animals. They can work through cats. They can work through pets. Uh, hallelujah. That's why a lot of these dogs will attack and kill people. Amen. It's that demon of destruction and death operating in them. Glory to God. Didn't, didn't Jesus cast the demons into the pigs? Amen. He, uh, these spirits can operate in animals. Amen. But we can discern these evil spirits in this matter through visions. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, uh, we need to know this, folks, because in the days come, we're going to see things in a vision around people, and it's going to help us to know which spirit is operating and which spirit we need to cast out and which spirit we need to be aware of. Amen. And you see, with the operation of the discerning of spirits, supernatural discerning of spirits, let's ask God for wisdom. Let's, God, let's ask the Lord for wisdom because every spirit he shows us is not for us to speak. It's not for us to, 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 to make known publicly. Amen. We've got to know what to keep. We got to know what to, when to speak. So let's ask God for wisdom, because the wis wisdom is the begin is the ability to use knowledge. Is the wisdom is the ability to use the knowledge, and we need to pray for the wisdom concerning the supernatural, discerning the spirit, so we can discern demons, and we need to also be able to discern, and the Holy Spirit will help us to discern, and the areas of sickness and disease, when the sickness is of a natural origin. Or when the sickness is of a demonic origin. When I use the word origin, it means beginning or source. When it's a natural source and it's a demonic source. Some sicknesses, most sicknesses are of a natural source. But there are some sicknesses that are uh, that are, uh, demonic source. In other words, there's a demon behind the sickness. Amen. And when there's a demon behind the sickness, before the person get healed, the spirit got to get cast out. And it can be a spirit of cancer. It can be a spirit of infirmity. Amen. It can be a, a, a spirit of, uh, of weakness, which is a spirit of infirmity, or any spirit that comes with a sickness. It can be a spirit of fear. A amen. It can be a spirit of divination. It can be a spirit of bitterness. Uh, amen. Because all these spirits can, ca can cause sickness. Now, a spirit of fear will cause sickness in your body. A spirit of fear will cause sickness in your body. Amen. Hallelujah. It'll work on your blood pressure. It'll work on your heart. It'll work on your cardiovascular system. Amen. Because it's fear. Amen. Hallelujah. It cause your blood pressure to go up. Hallelujah. People get scared, their blood pressure go up. Amen. That spirit of fear will give you a heart attack. Amen. But that spirit of fear. But we must be able to discern when the, when the sickness is, uh, and the Holy Spirit will allow us to discern when the sickness is natural, of a natural source, and when it's of a spiritual source. Now, when the, when the sickness is of a spiritual source, most cases, the doctors can't diagnose it. It won't show up. No sickness, nothing shows up on the MRI. Nothing shows up on the CT scan. Amen. And the doctor said, we can't see anything wrong with you. With the person just as sick as they can be. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a lot of times the medication, the prescription drug won't even work. Won't even make a difference. Why? Because the sickness is demonic. And we got to be able to discern when it's demonic sickness. And when it's demonic sickness, we have authority to cast out all the spirits of the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. But the supernatural discerning of spirits is an operation, a gift that we must have operating we must have knowledge of we must have understanding of in the days in which we live folks because the the, the purpose of this gift and let's look at the purpose the purpose of gift, this gift is number one protection it'll protect us from being deceived it'll protect us from being taken advantage of it'll protect us from evil people who look good but are wolves in sheep's clothing Hallelujah. And that's another purpose of it. It helps to, 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 to help us to identify the wolves that come along in sheep's clothing. Because the Bible said the devil himself is transformed into an angel of light. Amen. And without the discerning of spirits, we could be taken in. We could be taken advantage of. Amen. And we could be get in a relationship, a bad marriage. Glory to God. If we can't discern. Hallelujah. Because the word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And folks, I want you to know, I've tried to keep a lot of people out of bad marriage relationships by telling them, wait, take your time. Don't marry that person. But because they want to follow their flesh, they want to follow their human spirit, they went on and got married and they, they regretted it. But the discerning of spirits will protect us. That's why when you're around somebody who have the discerning of spirit, you better listen. You better listen what that person is, is saying to you because that individual could see into the supernatural realm they could see behind the scenes and that's why god has placed this gift 
at the body of Christ and just place it in, at, at, at believers to operate in us so that we can be protected from the deception, from the traps of the enemy. A lot of believers are trapped right now because they could not discern the spirit in people. Amen. Their lives are frustrated. Their lives are in a mess, but they're trapped because they did not discern. And, and the purpose of the, of the discerning of spirits, supernatural discerning of spirits is protection. It's also for identification that we can identify what spirits operating and what we're dealing with. It's to, for us to identify whether it's the Holy Spirit, whether it's an angel and what type of angel, whether it's a human spirit or whether it's a demonic spirit or a demon. It's for identification. So we'll know what to do and how to operate by what spirit that we're deserve, that we discern. And also the purpose of the supernatural discerning of spirit is for cooperation. That we can cooperate with the Holy Spirit. We can work with the Holy Spirit and not work against it. Folks, I believe as I speak, as I teach this, it's going to activate the supernatural discerning of spirits in your life like you've never known it before. You're going to know things by the Spirit of God. You're going to be able to discern the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hallelujah. Why? Because the, the, the discerner, glory to God, uh, the, the discerner of the Word of God being in us, God will operate the gifts of the supernatural discerning of spirit through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. God's going to be glorified. Hallelujah. The, for the supernatural discerning of spirit. Thank God for this gift. Thank God that it's being operated, activated in us for the days in which we live. And God's going to be glorified. The devil's already defeated. Hallelujah. Thank God for the spiritual exercise. And I encourage you to exercise more. I said exercise more. Spiritually exercise more. You see what do you mean? Pray. Read the word. Meditate. Fast. Amen. Amen. Minister deliverance. Preach the gospel prophesy, exercise your spiritual senses to properly and accurately operate in the supernatural discerning of spirits. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I hope you got something out of this. I enjoyed ministering it to you, but I always like to give somebody the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ because this is the beginning for us. This is the foundation for all of what God wants to do is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Then you get filled with the Holy Ghost. If you don't know the Lord, if you've just been living and not, you've just been existing and not really living, you need to receive Jesus Christ tonight. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. I'm talking to the atheist. I'm talking to the backslider. I'm talking to the drinker. I'm talking to the drug addict. I'm talking to the unclean person. I'm talking to the stripper. I'm talking to the gangbanger. I'm talking to the I'm talking to the witch. I'm talking to the warlock. You've been dabbling in all these all, all, all this, uh, this the work of divination. And, and, and you come to the place that you want to get right with God. Pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Come on, say it. Say, Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. I repent of every sin, known and unknown. Forgive me, Father, for the life I've lived and the things I've done. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe he rose from the dead, and I receive Jesus tonight as my Lord and Savior. Now say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost and fire. Come on, ask him for that baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost and fire. Glory to God. I will speak with other tongues. Come on, say it. I will speak with other tongues as the Spirit give me the utterance to begin the process of the operation of the nine gifts of the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me and filling me with the Holy Spirit. Come on, say, thank you, Jesus, for saving me and filling me with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. My friend, if you prayed that prayer, drop a line in the chat. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Drop a line in the chat. Glory to God. Just put it in the chat. I just received Jesus Christ. I believe it for the filling of the Holy Spirit. Now, the first operation of the gift of the Spirit will be praying in other tongues. That starts the gifts to operating. That's praying in the Spirit, which is praying in tongues. He'll go give you a heavenly language that you'll hear inside you first, duplicate it out of your mouth. Your, 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 your progress or your process has just begun in the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. And I pray, my prayer is that the supernatural discerning of Spirit be activated, be stirred up in you, and you too will be able to know the difference between darkness and light, know the difference between good and evil, and be able to discern the thoughts and intents of the hearts of people that you meet. May the Lord bless you tonight. May you have a great rest of the night. And may keep listening because we got more information. We got more videos coming out on the supernatural gifts of the spirit and living the supernatural life. 
May the Lord bless you. Have a great night. Great rest of the night. Keep yourself safe. Keep yourself strong. And continue to spiritually exercise. And God will use you in a mighty way. Victory belongs to us. But it only comes through the supernatural. The gifts of the supernatural. Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. Until the next time.